Israeli airstrikes have targeted a home in Gaza, killing the renowned Palestinian writer, poet, and professor Rifat Alarir. He co-founded a youth-led Palestinian non-profit project called We Are Not Numbers. It tells the stories behind Palestinians in the news and advocates for their human rights. Rifat edited the book called Gaza Writes Back, a collection of short stories written by young adults. Six members of his family, including his two siblings, were also killed in the strike. This is an excerpt of one of his poems called If I Must Die. It says, If I must die, you must live to tell my story, to sell my things, to buy a piece of cloth and some strings, make it white with a long tail so that a child somewhere in Gaza, while looking heaven in the eye, awaiting his dad who left in a blaze and bid no one farewell, not even to his flesh, not even to himself, sees the kite, my kite you made, flying up above, and thinks for a moment an angel is there bringing back love. If I must die, let it bring hope, let it be a tale. Let's now speak to Ahmed Nehad, who's a friend of Rifat. They went to university together and worked together sharing an office. He joins us from Dundee in Scotland. Thank you so much, Ahmed, for being with us, and, and we're so sorry for your loss. Dr. Rifat was a friend of yours. He was Gaza's most prominent writers, poets, activists who spent his life to get Gaza's voice to the outside world. His death is, is no doubt a huge loss for the people of Gaza. What will you remember him for most? Um, hi, thank you for having me. Uh, um, I'm really uh, not in a great state of mind to, um, uh, to talk, but I'm only here because uh, he told me to. He told me that if he must die, I must live to tell his story. And that's uh, that's what I'm trying to do, uh, to tell his story. Uh, Dr. Rifat was um, was actually my professor at university. Um, he taught me uh, poetry. He taught me English. And then we worked uh, together for the uh, past uh, couple of years. Uh, um, one thing I remember him, I will always remember him for one thing that everybody, every uh, student of his, every mentee of his, every uh, person who knew him, uh, met him, talked to him, even um, just followed him on, on Twitter, I uh, will remember him for is his love uh, for storytelling, his love for Palestine, his mm. firm belief that Palestine uh, will be freed and that um, we'll see it uh, free. And that the way to do that is to keep talking about Palestine, to keep telling and narrating the stories yeah. of Palestine and the people of Palestine. He, his project, We Are Not Numbers, how, how did that impact Palestinian people? And what difference did it make? Uh, Dr. Rifat was a leading um, he, he was a giant when it came to to writing, to writing back. As you mentioned, his his um, a very important book, the book he edited, Gaza Writes Back, is in a way an epitome of of all his work, um, all of his interest in in writing. We in that numbers is one of the projects uh, he helped uh, founding, and uh, not only that, but he uh, coached. Uh, thousands of uh, Gazan youth, uh, men and women, hmm. to write uh, about Palestine. He helped so many uh, uh, people write and publish their stories about Palestine and write poetry. I, I remember um, writing and reciting my first lines of poetry for him um, five years ago, and uh, I remember how he loved satire, how he um, how he always helped us and in a way, made fun of right. us. That's also one thing everybody has to remember him for, his love for satire and his humor. Um, he helped so many uh, um, writers, so yeah. many Palestinian writers, and he wrote so many important things, including his very important chapter in in, 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 in the book, uh, Light of Gaza, yeah. um, the first chapter of the book, as well as Gaza Rights Back, and sending, uh, so many more books and articles published online. Yeah. Ahmed, as you say, he helped lead and inspire a generation of writers in Gaza, including yourself. 
how will you make sure that his voice lives on? Um, one of the things that, one of the last things he sent me um, a few days ago was a list of 13 um, ideas for short films. He was, um, uh, um, he, he, he wrote down ideas as he always done writing ideas and exploring them and how to, to provide them. And one of the, the last things he sent me was those 13 ideas of short films that he wanted to uh, work on after this war ends. I know um, they killed him, and I know they killed him purposefully. He, he was threatened. He had so many threats online, so many people, including celebrities, targeting him and like calling um, the Israeli army to kill him, and, and they did eventually. But I know that um, his his message will not stop there, and that we'll continue working on um, continuing all the stuff he started and all the things he uh, wanted to uh, to complete, including so many articles he wrote in during this war mm. and are uh, in, the, in, the, in, in, in their way to, to be published and all these things, as well as like if you, if you Oh, if, you, if you start browsing X now, you'll see all, all the students that he, he told and all the people he influenced yeah. talking about the things he told them. And I know that um, his legacy will live um, forever, um, longer than this uh, genocidal state of Israel. And that all, all of us will keep writing, will keep um, using all the things and um, all, all, all the ways uh, um, uh, he, he told us to, to write, to resist this uh, okay. occupation the same way he did. Um, okay, Ahmed, yeah. thank you. Thank you so much for, for sharing your thoughts, your experience, and we, we are, again, very sorry for your loss. Ahmed Nihad is a friend of the renowned Palestinian writer and poet, Professor Rifat al who was killed in an Israeli airstrike earlier on Thursday. Thank you so much for your time.